Hello, welcome to my March wrap up. Boop, boop. So quick stats and we're gonna get straight into it. So in March, I read, I've got my notes here, a total of nine books, which was a total of 1,815 pages and 32 hours of listening time. In terms of the format, I read four print books, three audiobooks, and two ebooks. My TBR at the start of the month was 110, and my TBR at the end of the month was 108. Wow, it's got now two, and I read nine books. <laughs> um, my fiction non fiction split, I read six fiction books in March and three non fiction books. In terms of authors, I read six authors of colour and three white authors. Uh, in terms of queer characters, I read two books that had queer main characters and then one of the non-fictions was a collection, so there was like queer voices throughout, so I haven't included that, but yep. I haven't written down the sources because I looked at my spreadsheet and it was like Ben's book, borrowed, own TBR, ebook, library, review copy, it was a mess and you'll see throughout. Um, and I thought I would also introduce for this one my star ratings. I'm not going to give you a full breakdown, but they ranged this month from 5 to 2.5. So <laughs> let's go. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you had a good reading month and I hope you enjoy my thoughts. What am I saying? Goodbye. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the first segment. Boop, boop. Um, I've actually got two books for you today and this is quite a few days after I've actually finished them. So I finished them on Saturday and Sunday respectively. And I can't remember what day it is today, it's Tuesday the 9th, uh, which means that that was, why can't I work things like this out? Why do I have to use a calendar? Okay, <laughs> I finished Take a Hint Danny Brown on Saturday the 6th of March and Exit West by Mohsen Hamid on Sunday the 7th. So Molly from Mind of Molly very kindly invited me to do some reading sprints. It was the best time, it was so much fun, it was my first reading sprints and I finished Take a Hint Danny Brown in those sprints and I made a good dent in Exit West. So I'm here to give you my quick wrap up thoughts today. Hello, we're currently looking after my friend's cats and it is literally the best time. Aren't you just the cutest? I'm just going to keep her here. The first book that I finished is Take a Hint, Danny Brown. And this is the sequel to Get a Life, Chloe Brown. And I I loved this book. Um, I really liked the real focus on men's mental health um, because that was like focused on slightly in Get a Life, Chloe Brown, but it's much heavily, much heavier <laughs> focused on in this book. I loved Zaf as a character. I think he was really really three-dimensional. This is what I'm beginning to really enjoy about these books and I really liked their chemistry. I really liked the way that Zaf and Danny interacted and I really liked their open kind of communication. Um, it also focuses on the fake dating trope which oh, we love it, we love it. And I loved Danny as a character too. I loved, obviously she's central, I loved the contrast between Zaf and Danny. I loved how hard-working Danny is and how much Zaf respected that. Just, I loved it. I also loved the fact that Danny is bi and, but it's very casually done. It's not like focused on at all, but like where relevant, it's inclusive if that makes sense. So like her grandma, when asking if she's dating someone was kind of inclusively asking, wasn't just like, do you have a boyfriend? Um, that sort of thing, loved it. And then the sex, whew, Exactly the same as Chloe Brown. I think it was done amazingly. I will say, I can't comment on this really, um, being a white woman, but I will link down below some resources about the Muslim representation in this book. And the, because Talia Hibbert is not Muslim, some of the representation could be harmful. I will link below a post that I read about this, but I wanted to flag it because that was the first post I ever saw that sort of mentioned it. So yeah, I'll leave that down below. Alongside that, I think it's also important to stress like that obviously this book and this series is really important for black readers. It's a series of so much joy and I think it is important to kind of just consider 
if as readers we're giving the same level of scrutiny in representation to white authors as we are to authors of colour because sometimes it definitely can feel like white authors are given way too many chances and if it's a black author that has misrepresented a group hello <laughs> Wiggins I was talking seriously <laughs> if it's a black author that has misrepresented a group maybe they are not being given the same amount of chances I can't really draw a conclusion from that but like I just think it's important on both sides to have both of those conversations so yeah that is that one uh, and then the second book I read was Exit West by Mohsin Hamid this one I had bought from a charity shop for two puns two puns uh, this one is contemporary with elements of fantasy I suppose um, but it's very much rooted in um, contemporary uh, and so the whole idea of this book is that all over the world these doors are appearing and these doors take you to a different part of the world. Oh I forgot to say I buddy read this with Hannah from A Cup of Wonderland and it was a really lovely buddy read and it sparked some really interesting conversations between us as well so go and check out Hannah. Okay let's continue. <laughs> At the beginning we're kind of in a like unnamed city in an unnamed country. This city is very much gripped by civil war and so we start in a very um, tumultuous time I guess. We follow Nadia and Saeed. It's kind of about their relationship um, and how they kind of come together and come apart and the way it evolves with the situation around them and involving the doors. I will say the beginning of this book was very confusing because it jumped from like one person to another person, not just Nadia and Saeed, but like strangers. And also it's obviously jumping to like different parts of the world as well. And it was just a bit, I understand why it was done, but it was just a bit confusing. And it continued throughout, um, but sometimes it was like really effective. And then sometimes I was like, oh my God, I don't know what's happening. So yeah, take that as you will. Also, I think it took me a good like 40 or 50 pages to really get into the book but once I was in it I, I kind of read it quite quickly and it's very the language is very simple and very um easy to understand and to be honest I kind of expected it to have a bit more like of a poetic language. I was talking to Mariam from Mariam Reads about this um I will link her below because she had just read it it was it's kind of hard to explain but it kind of feels like it's just a bit underdeveloped like the whole story could have felt a lot more and it didn't but I think the commentary that it does have about immigration and the refugee crisis um was very poignant and especially when it considers this like kind of magical element of like doors are opening it brings into question and the book brings into question things like borders and like what do borders even mean now that we have these and that sort of thing yeah that's my second book of the mo year month oh my god i was gonna say year hello i assume i've said this in the intro hello jazz here interrupting past jazz who was interrupting past jazz can you keep up? Because I literally can't keep up. Um, I didn't mention it in the intro. <laughs> I took part in Tis the Damn Readathon in March. So for each wrap up section, I am telling you which prompt the book links with in Tis the Damn Readathon. And literally every single time I made my wrap up clip, I forgot and then I had to film an extra clip like this. So I hope you enjoy chaos but I forgot to mention which books were relevant for which prompts in the Tis the Damn Readathon. Readathon, <laughs> what am I talking about? Um, so I'm gonna quickly do that now um, and then from in the future I will remember because uh, I am trying to get a full house bingo. I'm taking part very casually. I'm trying to not let the prompts dictate my reading. I'm like picking reading and then trying to fill out the prompts, but it's going well so far. So for Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert, uh, this fits the prompt Speak Now from the Speak Now album, uh, which is read a book that's in a trilogy or the third book in a series. Uh, this is the second book in a trilogy. So ding, 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 ding. I um, It's funny because I'm taking part in this readathon and I'm really excited, but I don't get like half the references because I'm not a true Taylor Swift fan, but I'm still having a great time. <laughs> and then the second book, Exit West by Mohsin Hamid, I, we looked through all of the prompts and I felt like I could potentially squeeze it into um, books that's been on your TBR the longest, but it's like not quite true. But then I saw in the Red album, read a book with red on the cover and um, right here, which is 
his name. So smash that and you'll see on the screen, they're in a line. I'm already on track for a line bingo. That is the readathon stuff. I will update you in the actual wrap up bits next time. My bad. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello, it is Sunday the 14th of March and I have two books to talk to you about today. It's weird that I have finished these books basically together. I finished the first one yesterday and then this one today. And um, basically they're just, I didn't know that they were gonna link content wise and then also like surrounding the outside world as well. It's been very overwhelming in terms of reading. Yesterday I finished Parachutes by Kelly Yang and today I finished Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrow. Before I get into the wrap up quickly, I just will say that both of these books do heavily focus on sexual assault, rape, sexual harassment. Bear that in mind, um, because especially in terms of the outer conversation, just in terms of the world at the moment, um, in terms of Sarah Everard, and obviously all the conversations that have been happening in terms of uh, being a woman and harassment and that has been very important conversations, but also quite overwhelming. Um, and so to have read these books at the same time as that happening in the real world was um, a lot. Um, and I'm going to be reading something a bit lighter now. I don't even have the words to be honest, but let's just talk about the books, I think. So let's start with Parachutes. Parachutes by Kelly Yang is a YA. To be honest, I did not know that this book was going to be this heavy. So this is dual narrated by Danny and Claire. Uh, and the whole concept, well, the initial concept I knew going into it is that Claire is a parachute. Um, she is a Chinese student. Her rich parents basically um, put her into this American prep high school to get an education and they are referred to as like parachutes. So we follow Claire and then we also follow Danny who Claire ends up living with. It very much like showcases like a class divide and to be honest this book covers, I'm like struggling to um, eloquently explain how many topics this book covers and covers well because sometimes with books if it tries to cover too many things it ends up feeling quite surface level but this is absolutely not the case with Parachutes. Honestly, it has become definitely one of my favourite books and like maybe one of my favourite books I've read this year and I've read some good books this year. I don't know. It was really good. So we kind of follow Claire and Danny as they are like getting to know each other and there's kind of like a bit of a rift between them. We are following a lot of different storylines and kind of some main threads throughout are about sexual harassment. One of them is from a teacher and there is also an instance of rape in this book. So definitely tread cautiously if you do want to read this book because it is by no means a light book. The way that it explores both of these instances and how isolating sexual harassment and sexual assault can be uh, and victim blaming, particularly I think this book focuses on not being believed and especially not being believed by institutions that have power and are not believing you or refusing to believe you because it will affect their institution in terms of like people are investing in this school um and it can't damage the look of the school so we're gonna like sweep this under the rug we don't want to talk about this with you um it was heartbreaking in the author's note kelly yang talks about how she wrote this story because because it comes from her own experience. So it was really hard to read, um, but really, really good at the same time. This book does explore like a lot of things as well. It like talks about sexuality um, and has a focus on friendships and hard relationships with your parents and a real like plethora of like other conversations that this book is having. And it really, if you, feel you are able with the trigger warnings to read this book, um, I really would recommend it. Um, and kind of moving on to a book that is not the same but really discusses quite similar topics is Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrow. So this is a non-fiction and Ronan Farrow is the journalist who helped to expose Harvey Weinstein. I thought I knew like the kind of basics of that case and everything that happened and obviously 
this was like a really major component of the Me Too movement and exposing sexual predators in Hollywood, I really realised how naive I had been, I guess, in terms of this story and in terms of the corruption and how much money played a part in these stories not getting told sooner. This, again, very heavy. Obviously, this book is discussing sexual harassment, sexual assault and rape um, alongside a lot of other things. So yeah, check out the trigger warnings. I think Ronan Farrow does a really excellent job in terms of narrating. Um, I was talking to both my partner and Mariam on Instagram actually in terms of how this book feels like a thriller but then you obviously have to remind yourself like no this is not a thriller, like this is something, this happened, this is non-fiction, this is real. But the way that he writes it um, I read this really quickly and it is like over 400 pages. So in terms of that, in terms of non-fiction, it's dense with information, it's dense with names, but the actual writing I think is quite accessible, um, which is great because it enables more people to hear these women's voices. We see the real corruption and power that people high up in Hollywood and in news um, agencies hold and how they exploit that power. This does focus on women that were sexually harassed and then given non-disclosure agreements so they couldn't talk about it. Which by the way, Parachutes also like del delve into as well. Um, so it really was like reading the book at the same time, like my God, <laughs> like one non-fiction, this happened, one fictional example of it happening and it was just a lot. But the ways in which like NBC covered things up and like the ways in which private investigators following Ronan Farrow to like report back to an investigation that would then report back to Harvey Weinstein is just like, yeah, the levels at which and lies that occurred within NBC, within a news organisation that is obviously the foundation is designed to give you news, the levels of cover up because of the people of power higher up. I can't even explain it. I wanted to quickly read a quote from Chai from Books of China's um, blog. I just think the way they, they worded this quote is kind of exactly how I'm thinking and can't quite like get out. So I just figured I would read you their quote instead. And I will leave their blog down below because their review of this book is really, really good. Catch and Kill is a spine chilling illustration of what angry men in power can do when denied something they felt that they are owed and the extreme tools they have at their disposal when they are bent on smothering the truth. Yes, <laughs> the absolute power dynamics that are shown within this book and how they are manipulated and used to silence these women is so hard to read and so frustrating and sad but also essential in terms of continuing to talk about this issue. I don't think I've like eloquently explained myself in any of these clips because it feels really, as I said, especially with what's going on in the world at the moment, very raw um, and very real, which it is. So that's both of those books. I would recommend them both if you are able to. Um, and in terms of Tis the Damn Readathon, so for Parachutes, I am ticking off Fearless, the album Fearless, and that is the prompt read a book that is YA in genre because Parachutes is YA. And then for Catch and Kill, I am ticking off Reputation. One of the prompts was look what you made me do, and that is read a book that was recommended to you. And Catch and Kill was recommended to me by Ben because he read it last year. And we sometimes do a thing where we pick five or six books and kind of like convince the other person to read one and then we end up picking one and I couldn't choose between this and another book and I put it to you guys on Instagram and you guys voted for Catch and Kill. So yeah, that is where I'm at with the readathon. That's where I'm at with my reading. Sorry if this hasn't been very coherent. Hopefully future jazz will be a bit more upbeat and sprightly. Yes. This is a puzzle book. I did do a puzzle out of it, but that is not what I'm here to talk to you about. Welcome to the conservatory, by the way. So I'm here because I finished two books and I don't know why this wrap up seems to be coming in like books of two every time. <laughs> and it's not even like I finished them on the same day this time. I just kind of like forgot to do the wrap up. So 
I don't have physical copies of either of them. The first one I it's on my Kindle, so I could show you, but like whatever, I'll just I'll put it here. Um, so the first one is the other F word, which is edited by Angie Manfredi. This is a collection of essays, poetry, prose, illustrations, like lots of different things, um, all about being fat. Saying that, literally to me saying that, feels really uncomfortable, which is really interesting because that is something that the, a lot of the essays dive into, about how fat feels like such a bad word. Growing up, it feels like it's only ever been used as a negative thing. Someone saying like, oh, you're so fat, and it's, it's being used as a bad thing. And so using that word in an empowering way is really interesting and, and nice and positive and like a lot of the essays explore that. What I really appreciated about this essay collection is that it's really from like quite a variety and diverse range of people. Um, at the beginning I think it was Angie kind of discussed the fact that being fat and talking about fat phobia has very much always come from like a cis white able-bodied perspective so they thought it was really important to in this collection have a real diverse range of people and that definitely came across and the individual experiences and intersections of being fat and black of being fat and disabled really highlighted like each person's unique experience with being fat it's really made me like reflect on times where i have been fat phobic in the past or like talking about diet culture. There's a few things in this book that stuck out to me and one of them was talking about kind of like the innate nature of if someone said like, oh, I feel I'm, I'm fat, you're in, your innate response is to be like, oh no, you're not. And it's not a bad thing. And there was one, I can't remember who it was, but they were like, um, no, yeah, I am fat. <laughs> like, it's not a bad thing, but it's true, uh, which I really appreciated. And then there was also like a really interesting passage about um, exercising and talking about how if you see a thin person exercising, you don't really question their motives behind exercising or why they're exercising. But if you see a fat person exercising, the innate response is they're trying to lose weight. Which like, no, that's not the case. Like, it could be the case. It could be the case for both types of body types, but it does not have to be exercising equals losing weight if you are in a bigger body, if you're fat. One of the essays was talking about, like, you know, you might just enjoy the way that your body feels when you're exercising. You like to feel strong, but it has nothing to do with, like, wanting to lose weight. Um, I thought that was really interesting. So if you like essay collections, um, I would definitely recommend picking this one up. Yeah, so that's the first one. The second book is Do You Dream of Terror 2 by Temi O, oh, which I finished yesterday. Oh, did I say when I finished the last one? Yeah, I'm sure I put it on the screen. This one I finished yesterday. I had such a headache yesterday. So I kind of like closed my eyes, put some cucumber on my eyes and had my headphones on and just led there for like an hour and finished the audiobook, which was quite pleasant. This is a sci-fi, which is really like not like me, but I really enjoyed it. <laughs> so this is kind of a reimagining. I don't know. It's set in two that I'll just explain it because I don't I don't know the words. It's set in 2012 and the UK has like it's called like the UKSA, the UK Space Agency. So it has a big forefront within space travel and they have discovered a planet called Terra 2 which has, seems to be a similar dynamic and atmosphere to Earth and they are beginning a program where they send people to that planet to start exploring it and, and potentially living there. We start off as these six students aged like 12 or 13 I believe are chosen as like the beta group to go to Terra 2. The beginning part is like set on Earth as they're like going through this training and then six of them head off to you know, interstellar travel to go to Terra 2. And that is the concept of this book. And I won't obviously spoil the plot, but um, I really liked it. I really was gripped. The audio, it, it must be a big book because the audiobook was like for over 14 hours and I read it within a week, which is very fast for me with an audiobook. Usually they take me like two or three weeks, not because I'm not enjoying them, but like just because I don't read them as often, I guess, than as physical books, but I was finding every single opportunity to listen to this book 
um, and that is really telling. And I thought the writing was amazing and really gripping and the story was gripping. I think the first part of the book has a different vibe as the second part of the book. I guess there's just more action happening in the second part of the book. And at the beginning I did find it hard to keep track of all the characters because I'm not used to like, you know, six main characters plus like two or three other characters and trying to keep track of which one is which. But you definitely, the characterization comes in more throughout and um, good character development as well. It touched on some topics, I will say trigger warnings for suicide and eating disorders, depression and hallucinations. With the depression and like eating disorder parts, I don't think they were explored 100%. Like I think they both had like a real focus for like a chapter and then they seemed to like go away and they would be mentioned maybe like once or twice and that's it. And I think I would have liked to see that threaded a bit more throughout the plot because especially with eating disorders and depression, it's something obviously that you go through periods where it is a lot worse. And so to an extent I can see by it being depicted in this one chapter, that's like a bad period. But then I would have liked to see it mentioned more throughout and kind of more, a bit more fully rounded. Um, but that was like my only mm, little part. That's why it's a four star for me. But I really liked this. I would really recommend it if you were into sci-fi. Um, and if you're not into sci-fi, because I didn't think I was into sci-fi, but I really liked the realistic sci-fi vibes. Hello, I forgot to tell you where these two books fit into Tis the Damn Readathon. I'm so bad at remembering. Um, so I'll tell you right now. So the other F word is the prompt for Lover and it was read a five star prediction. This ended up being a 4.5 star. So pretty close um, and a really good book. And then Do You Dream of Terror 2? I have chosen for 1989, read a book with a number in the title. Do You Dream of Terror 2? I was like struggling, like where can I fit this number prompt in or like how can I tick off 1989 whilst reading Do You Dream of Terror 2? And it like didn't click, so. We love to see it. Um, I'm getting pretty close with my bingo, I'm quite excited. And yeah, that's it. On to the next book or books. Shall we just say books at this point? I don't even know, bye. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to yet another different angle in my household. <laughs> um, today is Wednesday the 24th of March and last night, Tuesday the 20th, 3rd of March. That shouldn't have been that hard to work out. I finished The Disaster Tourist by Yun Cohen. This was translated from the Korean into English by Lizzie Bula. This book was the February and March pick for the Bruise and Reviews book club, which is a book club that I host with Sean from Caffeine and Commas as part of our podcast, Bruise and Reviews. Um, links below if you have no idea what I'm talking about. I have a podcast. <laughs> so this was the February and March pick because it's a quarterly book club. To give a synopsis, this book basically follows a woman called Yona. She works for a travel company called Jungle and they specialise in disaster travel programmes where tourists visit disaster locations. So it basically follows her as she goes to this um, disaster location called Mui and their their disaster program is kind of like at threat of being taken off of the jungle program and so she is there to kind of like see what it's like and we go from there I won't say anything else um, but it explored a lot of very interesting topics like the topics of disaster tourism and just tourism in general and how it affects like local communities where you go um, in various different ways and like the commentary on society through that was really interesting I do think um, I don't I'm not sure what I rated this I th I'm thinking a three star but like I'm honestly not sure I just think it could have gone into more depth like I really liked it but it's so short it's like 170 pages and I actually would have much preferred it if it was a bit longer because then it would have felt a bit more fleshed out and gone into more detail and some of the relationships slash characters 
that I couldn't really get to grips with because it was so quick, I would have felt more. And then in turn, I think the whole story would have been more well developed. So yeah, that's my like base thoughts. Um, but I'm sure we're going to go into much more detail in the podcast. So do check that out if you are interested in this book. Um, but it's a really interesting one. Like I say it's a three star read, but I do think it is one I'm going to kind of continue to mull over. But it's a really interesting one. Like I say it's a three star read, but I do think it is one I'm going to kind of continue to mull over because I think the topic is really interesting. Um, so if anyone has any other sort of like eco thriller esque recommendations, leave them below. So yeah, that's this one. Can we believe that I only had one book here to talk to you about? Crazy. Um, Oh, Tis the Damn Readathon. I didn't forget this time. I have chosen this for Evermore, No Body, No Crime, Reader Mystery or Thriller. Uh, Cause it is kind of a mystery thriller. It's like not 100%, but like it definitely counts. So yeah, that's that. On to the next one. Hello, welcome back to my wrap up. What am I saying? Um, okay, so on Thursday, I can't remember the date, I assume it's on the screen. Um, sorry, by the way, this is just a cupboard. I finished Out of the Woods by Luke Turner. This is a memoir. Um, I am doing a bisexual reading vlog for this one, so stay tuned. Um, so I won't go into too much depth, but I do not know how I felt about this book. Memoirs are hard to rate because it's literally someone's life. And so when I don't enjoy a memoir, it's like weirdly personal, if that makes sense. Um, but this is basically a memoir really about Epping Forest and Luke's relationship to Epping Forest and in turn his relationship with his bisexuality, um, growing up being bisexual and religious, his experience with trauma and abuse and sexual abuse. And I think the way it discussed those topics was interesting, um, but the language is really dense. Um, <laughs> Hi Minx. We've just like got cats aplenty, haven't we? The language is really dense. The descriptions of the forest is really dense. And I found the whole thing really hard. It kind of jumped around a lot. And the, when it did discuss bisexuality, when it did discuss his experience with trauma and with abuse and his relationship growing up religious, it was really interesting, but I found the heavy description of trees a lot. So that's my overall thoughts. Stay tuned for my reading vlog for this one where I go into a lot more depth. Um, I read this one for Sarah and Sophie's LGBTQ plus book club. The next book is sci-fi fantasy and it is the psychology of time travel. Um, and I'm really excited to read that one. So yeah, anyway, that's this one. Oh, tis and I read a thon. Why do I, it's like always an afterthought. I'm terrible. This one I have used for the album Taylor Swift, I think, and it's read a memoir makes sense. So yeah, that's this one. On to the next one. Are we shocked? We're back to just one book, one book. I'm shocked. I'll see you. Shall I just close the door? <laughs> see you in the next one. Hello. Um, so I forgot to film my last wrap up clip. So this is definitely the last book in March because it's now April. Uh, and I can't remember when I listened to it. This is so bad because this actually was one of my favourite books of the month and I just didn't film anything, but that's fine. Um, it is Pie in the Sky by Remy Lay. This is a middle grade, I read it on my phone. I got it out of the ebook library. The li- what? The library app, ebook, that, whatever that said, yes. So it's like a mix of prose and a graphic novel. It's kind of like a mix of the two. It's more text than like illustrations, but it, it is a nice mix and I, really really enjoyed this book by the way i'm really sorry if i'm squinting it's like really bright in here i'm trying to like <laughs> so this book basically follows this family who move from they don't specify the country but they basically move to australia and the main characters are jingwen and yang ho uh, and their brothers and we follow jingwen and he basically feels like he's been dropped in this like alien country he doesn't know what's going on around him because he doesn't speak English and it's kind of follows his struggles trying to like navigate this completely 
alien place that he is now living. Uh, and alongside that, it talks a lot about family dynamics and family relationships and grief especially because they have lost their father. The way that it talks about that is really interesting because a lot of it is through baking which was really fun and like kind of cool to read about. You find out that they as a family have like a history of baking and like throughout the book basically Jingwen and Yang Ho bake these cakes together and the descriptions of all the cakes is really like nice there's actually a rainbow cake recipe in the back which is really cool it was just really it was really lovely like it was a, I like literally didn't want the book to end it was such a nice middle grade I think the mix of like discussing serious topics with like the humour of like being that age was done really well like there were times that I was giggling <laughs> It was really interesting to see kind of like how Jingwen was experiencing school and seeing him and his relationship with his brother change and kind of how he like gains inspiration from Yang Ho who is like younger than him and is able to pick up English quicker than he is. So yeah, I would really recommend this one. It's really good. Um, I may or may not be doing it for an Under the Spot Hype episode. So stay tuned for that. Hello. Yeah, we forgot to do Tis the Damn Readathon again. <laughs> what a good ending of the video. <laughs> um, so the final prompt I have left on the bingo board is folklore. And my book is Pie in the Sky and I cannot make it fit because <laughs> the prompts are read a book. I'm just going to read it down here. Read a book based on mythology, folk tales, or retelling. Nope. Read a book written by two authors. Nope. <laughs> So it doesn't fit that. However, there's a secondary section, blank space, which is such a clever way to use the album blank space. So it's like a blank space, but you still have to fulfill a certain prompt in blank space. Um, so there are read a book Taylor Swift has, re has referenced. She has not referenced Pie in the Sky. Read a book with a main character with a name from one of Taylor's songs. There's a list. They're not there. The last one, read a book about cats. Or with cats on the cover. No cats on the cover. <laughs> it's not a book about cats. But there's a cat in the book. The neighbour, whose name I don't remember, has a cat. And sometimes the, the neighbour brings the cat over to their flat and they look after the cat. That counts. I'm counting that because that would make it a full bingo. And I've completed the read with him. With minimal cheating. <laughs> this has been really fun though. Love to do a readathon occasionally and do it in a mood reader way, aka I read what I want and then jam my books into prompts. <laughs> Back to past jazz to round off this video. But yeah, that's it. I will wrap this wrap up, wrap up up here because it's April. No more books in March. But a really varied reading month. Um, and hopefully April will provide an equally varied reading month. Thank you for watching. If you watched to the end, but you don't have anything to comment, comment a little cake for pie in the sky or a pie, but they bake cakes. So a cake emoji, comment a cake emoji. Okay, I will see you in a new video. Bye.